Okay, in this video we're going to talk about a general strategy for proving that there are infinitely many primes of the form uh, b mod a. So obviously b and a have to be relatively prime here and there's a hugely powerful theorem called Dirichlet's theorem that says that there are infinitely many primes of this form if these two are relatively prime. But generally in elementary number theory classes you are asked to prove these kind of statements without using that theorem. Which is why I'm making this video to give you guys an outline for how to prove these um, without that theorem. Okay. Good. So the first step is as follows. You want to assume that P1 to PK is a complete list of primes of the form that you're trying to prove which there are infinitely prime, many primes of. So in other words, we're wor working towards a contradiction here. Now the next thing is you want to form a polynomial f of x which has been evaluated at some number times the product of all of the primes in this complete list and uh, generally evaluating it at that number gives us a number at, um, capital N. So this should be really F of that number. And that gives us capital N and then uh, the important thing is that this capital N cannot be divisible by PI. Any of the PI. Now the next thing is you want to assume that P divides N. So you know if you've got a number N it can be factored into primes so just pick a prime factor of that and then notice that because of this over here we know that F of X is congruent to 0 mod P has some sort of solution. In fact the solution is uh, uh, whatever you get when you plug in this number into the polynomial and then you want to show that P is congruent to B mod A. In other words, you've got a new prime of that form. And generally, you're using quadratic residue or, or quadratic reciprocity or something similar along the way. Okay, so this is the general strategy. So now what I want to do is look at um, some examples. So let's say congruent to 0 mod 1 so this is silly, but this is the same thing as just like infinitely many primes. Okay, so again, step one is you assume that this is all primes, the list P1 to PK. And then um, step number two is you want to form a polynomial that's been evaluated at some number times this product. And in this case, the polynomial is just going to be f of x equals x plus 1. And then we're going to look at f of this product. So that's going to be p1 up to pk plus 1. And now notice that pi does not divide n, where we've called n the output of that polynomial. Okay, great. But now, uh, the next thing that we can see is that we have, a, we have a new prime that divides n, right? But this is uh, not on our list. So there's actually nothing really fancy that you have to do in this case because um, we have such a simple polynomial and we're not really looking for primes of any really special form. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll uh, sketch one, uh, a couple more examples. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's say we have congruent to uh, 1 mod 4. Okay, so the other thing that we're, the first thing that we're going to do is suppose that these are all primes congruent to 1 mod 4. Good. And then the next thing that we're going to do is pick a polynomial that is evaluated at something like that. So we'll take f of x to be x squared plus 1 and then we'll evaluate f of 2 times this product p1 to pk and notice that gives us 4 p1 squared up to pk squared plus 1. <clears throat> now let's say that's equal to n. Okay great. Now uh, the next thing that we can do is suppose n divide, sorry, suppose p is a new prime that divides n. But what that tells us is that um, 
x squared plus 1 congruent to 0 mod p has a solution. But that tells us, using the Legendre symbol, that negative 1 by p equals 1. But then again, um, by the theory of quadratic residues, that tells us that p is congruent to 1 mod 4, which is a contradiction. Okay, so here's another example. Now before I continue on, notice I'm doing really just brief sketches of this because I want to underscore this outline and not the exact proofs. I actually have another video where I prove this super carefully that I'll let you guys look at. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at one more. Okay, so now we're ready to look at one more and let's say, let's say that's primes of the form um, one mod eight. So again, using this outline, Let's say P1 up to PK. These are all primes congruent to 1 mod 8. Now something uh, different goes on in this case. Let's set f of x equal to x to the fourth plus 1. So I'll let you guys play around with it and see why x squared plus 1 doesn't work like it did in the last example, but it doesn't. Um, and then take f of 2 times p1 up to pk. So notice that's going to be 16 p1 to the fourth up to pk to the fourth um, plus 1. Now it's not too hard to see that uh, that is congruent to 1 mod 8 and it's impossible for pi to divide any of those, or sorry, any of the pi to divide this, so let's just write that down. pi can't divide n. That's not too hard to see. But then, uh, so let p be some prime dividing n. But that means x to the fourth plus one congruent to zero mod p has a solution. We know the solution. It's that solution right there. Okay, but then after a little bit more work, um, you can see that this implies that p is congruent to one mod eight. So in other words, only primes of the form 1 mod 8 produce some sort of fourth root of negative 1. Again, uh, you'd have to check that carefully, but that's true. Okay, good. So again, I didn't want to do super careful proofs of this. We're just highlighting this outline here, um, and I hope this was helpful. Okay, this is the end of the video.